Are you overwhelmed by the never-ending supply of depressing bad news? Well, let's recharge our batteries with some recent positive news stories. This is Giddy News for the month of October 2024. Canadian Swifties launch Food Bank Fundraiser ahead of Toronto and Vancouver Eras Tour shows is the Giddy News headline courtesy of Lindsay William Ross with Vancouver is Awesome and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Since the Eras Tour began in March of 2023, Taylor Swift has donated the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of meals via food banks in every city where she performs. Food bank operators say Swift's support has been meaningful, especially in drawing attention to their crucial service for low-income people. And now, inspired by Swift's generosity, her fans in Canada have banded together for Pay It Forward, which aims to raise over a million dollars for Food Banks Canada. On its website, the Canada-wide project states that they are following Taylor's lead and giving back by choosing Food Banks Canada to help them fight food insecurity in Canada together. While close to a half million people are expected to attend Swift's Eras Tour shows between Toronto in November and Vancouver in December, Tay It Forward organizers are encouraging even those who didn't score tickets to pitch in. Donations can be made via the Food Banks Canada Tay It Forward fundraising portal, and I'll include a link in the description below. UK Toddler Has Hearing Restored in World First Gene Therapy Trial is the Giddy News headline courtesy of Andrew Gregory with The Guardian, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. A British toddler has had her hearing restored after becoming the first person in the world to take part in a pioneering gene therapy trial. Opal Sandy was born unable to hear anything due to auditory neuropathy, a condition caused by a faulty gene that disrupts nerve impulses traveling from the inner ear to the brain. After receiving an infusion containing a working copy of the gene during the groundbreaking 16-minute surgery, the 18-month-old now can hear almost perfectly. The Oxfordshire girl was treated at Addenbrooke Hospital, part of Cambridge University Hospital's Foundation Trust. Professor Manahar Bantz, an ear surgeon at the Trust and chief investigator for the trial, said the initial results were better than expected or even hoped for. Since then, a second child has also received the gene therapy treatment at Cambridge University Hospitals with positive results. Belgian sex workers to get health insurance, pensions, and maternity leave in World First is the Giddy News headline courtesy of James Crisp with The Telegraph, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Belgium has become the first nation to approve a labor law regarding employment contracts for sex workers. The law entitles sex workers to health insurance, pensions, unemployment, and other family benefits, holidays, and maternity leave. It also bestows certain rights on the worker, such as the right to refuse a client or specific sexual acts, and the right to interrupt a sexual act at any time without fear of dismissal or punishment. The contracts will be provided under the same heading as those given to hospitality workers in the restaurant and hotel sector. This is intended to ensure former sex workers can apply for other jobs without fear of discrimination. Dan Bowens, a spokesperson for the Sex Workers Union in Belgium, stated, This law is a world first. I cannot stress enough how important this is. Belgium is really demonstrating that it aims to protect sex workers regardless of any moral judgment about the profession. After being diagnosed with MS, he started running marathons. It's helping reverse the disease's progression is the Giddy News headline courtesy of Carrie Breen with CBS News, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. When Derek Stefuriak was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, he was a smoker who never exercised. But everything changed at 39 when his body seized at work for about a minute, and he soon after was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Stefuriak said doctors told him the progressive disease was incurable, but that the best thing he could do was to get healthy. He stated, that scared me enough to quit smoking, and as part of quitting smoking, I started jogging. Now, 13 years after his diagnosis, Stefuriak has run 36 marathons, including one in Antarctica and one on Mount Everest. And after recently completing Australia's Brisbane race, he's now run a marathon on every continent. He's built a community of runners with his condition, and his doctor says he's even managed to reverse the progression of his multiple sclerosis. Next up, he wants to run a marathon in the North Pole and at Mount Kilimanjaro. 
Norway sees electric cars outnumber petrol models is the Giddy News headline courtesy of Robert Plummer with the BBC News and a link to the source will be included in the description below. According to new numbers from the Norwegian Road Federation, of the 2.8 million private cars registered in Norway, 754,000 are all electric while 753,000 run on petrol. Sales of electric vehicles have been boosted by tax breaks and other incentives funded in large part from the money Norway makes out of oil and gas. Many places offer free parking for electric vehicles and their drivers do not have to pay city tolls. And while electric car owners in many other countries complain about the lack of charging facilities, there are numerous free chargers in every Norwegian town and city, with 2,000 of them in Oslo alone. The Nordic nation is now aiming to become the first nation to end the sale of new petrol and diesel cars. Currently, 9 out of 10 new cars sold in Norway are electric vehicles. Students raise over $20,000 to surprise custodian with Dream Jeep is the Giddy News headline courtesy of Yi Jin Yu with ABC News and a link to the source will be included in the description below. A group of Virginia high school students surprised their school custodian with a new car after raising over $20,000. The sophomore students started a fundraiser hoping that they might raise enough money before they graduated to buy the car, but the donations quickly poured in. They raised over $5,000 in the first two days alone and reached their goal in just three months. A custodian at James Madison High School in Vienna, Virginia, was the recipient of the surprise Jeep Wrangler, which was his dream car. When surprised with the gift, Apraku fell to the ground in shock but was all smiles afterwards. He stated, I couldn't believe it when I received such an incredible gift. This means the world to me and I will never forget their kindness. Meet the Cambridgeshire dad whose alphabet tattoo helps his son communicate is the Giddy News headline courtesy of Faye Mayern and Kate Findlay with Cambridgeshire Live and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Dan Harris got the tattoo on his left forearm due to concerns that his 10-year-old son Joshi couldn't always express his needs. Diagnosed with autism at 2 years old, Joshi uses an iPad talker to communicate with simple words and pictures. However, Dan was worried because the device runs out of battery and could get lost or damaged, leaving Joshi unable to express himself. Now, Dan says his son can use the arm tattoo to spell out names or what he means by pointing to the letters and building sentences of a few words. He stated, Joshi comes into my room and touches my arm first thing in the morning to check that the tattoo is still there. He's still learning that it's permanent and not going away. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Giddy News. And if you have a positive news story that you'd like for me to share, please include a link in the comments down below. And until next time, take care of yourself and thanks for watching.